Hello students. Let us consider the program for computation of impulse response from the difference equation or the transfer function. Here we can observe the general difference equation describing any LTI system. Description is in terms of the outputs which is y and the inputs which is x. The coefficient of x is bk and the coefficient of y term is ak. Now, a similar description is provided by the system function which is represented as h of z and is described as below. So, the relation between the two is by using the z transform. Let us take an example of a second order difference equation. The order is computed based on the power of the numerator or the denominator, whichever is higher. So the difference equation is given as follows. So you can see a term with x of n minus 2 as well as y of n minus 2. So the power of the numerator and the denominator is going to be 2. It is a second order difference equation. The same could be expressed in the form of a system function. This is done by taking the transform of the difference equation and arranging the terms with y of z and x of z. The ratio of y of z by x of z is the system function h of z. Now, in order to simplify this mathematically and to obtain the impulse response, first we will apply the long division method and bring h of z to the form as shown. Here we have chosen the first five terms but ideally the division can continue and you can get infinite number of terms. Next step is taking the inverse transform. The inverse transform of the above equation results in h of n. Now delta of n tells us where the origin lies. Now the same h of n in the sequence form could be expressed as below. So we are just copying down the coefficients and the presence of delta of n tells us where is the origin. Another method of solving the difference equation, this time not involving the system function. So the method goes something like this. In order to determine the impulse response, we are going to apply an input which is unit impulse. Then the output becomes the impulse response. Hence x of n is replaced by delta of n and the output terms which is y of n it becomes h of n. So accordingly in the given equation we are making the changes. So wherever you have a y term it is expressed as h of n terms and wherever you have an input it is replaced by delta of n. Now, in order to solve this, we have to consider certain number of values of n. The first value we are going to take is n is equal to 0. So, on substituting for n is equal to 0, this is the result we obtain. And while we are solving, we have to assume no initial conditions. So, that means that delta of n delta of minus 1, delta of minus 2, h of minus 1, h of minus 2, all these terms will become 0. Delta of 0 from the definition of impulse function is 1. Hence your result is as follows. Now generally speaking, this is nothing but the first numerator coefficient which is b naught. On similar lines, next we determine the value of h of n for n is equal to 1. So we substitute for that particular value of n and this is what we get. So you notice that the terms delta of 1 is 0, delta of minus 1 is 0, h of minus 1 is 0. So what remains? We have to do the substitution. We end up with the result which is like this. Now on an equation basis, if you evaluate this term 
is b1 times 1 and the next term is minus a1 times h0. So this is a generalized form. Similarly, you proceed for n value which is 2, n value which is 3 and n values 4 because we are considering the first five outputs and the equations and the results that are developed can be observed. So here I have taken the transfer function for comparison so you can identify which coefficient is represented in which place. Let us consider the program for solving a second order difference equation. Now to analyze the program which is written accordance to the equations that we have developed in the previous example. So here we have listed out the equations. Now please understand that the numerator coefficients we have been denoting as b and denominator coefficients we have been denoting as a. So in order to maintain consistency with the logic, so I request you students to kindly change the coefficients uh, a and b in the program. Okay, So in the program it is mentioned as a and it is corresponding to the numerator here and b is the denominator. To maintain consistency with this idea we can just swap a and b. So where there is a a we change it to b and where there is a b we change it to a. So accordingly now the program it becomes so with suitable indentation, let us have a look at the program now. So we are defining the order in this program to be equal to 2. The length of the output is determined as 5. So we are limiting the number of points. You can have more also. Now to accommodate the answer, we are taking an array by the name as h. Its size is decided by the length. Initially, since it's of type float, it is containing five zeros and we have another variable of type float which is called as sum. Now as I have mentioned b here in consistency with our logic will be the numerator coefficients and a will, denom will be the denominator coefficients. So compare with the example you can see how the values are entered. Now coming to the program the first for loop is controlled by the index which is called as j. It is ranging from 0 to less than the length. So it is between 0 to 4 in this program. So this is in accordance to the answers that we want. The result is from h of 0 up to the last value which is h of 4. Now sum is a variable uh, that we are using in the computation. Its initial value is set to 0. Now there is an inner loop which is controlled by the variable which is called as k. Now we start with the value of k which is 1 and the value of k should be less than or equal to the order which happens to be 2. So there are only two possible values of k. Either it is going to be 1 and next it is going to become 2. Now inside the for loop we are examining the condition whether the difference of j minus k is it greater than or equal to 0. If it is so then the equation for the sum is updated. So how it is updated? So sum here reflects the quantities which we have shown in bracket. Okay. So let us take an example. Initial value of j is 0. Initial value of k is 1. So the difference 0 minus 1 will not be greater than 0. So it does not enter this particular loop. But for the next iteration when j value becomes 1 and k becomes 1 then the condition is 1 minus 1 0 which happens to be equal to 0 then the sum is evaluated. So we understand that for the very first iteration there is no need to evaluate what is called as a sum. Okay? But 
for the second iteration when you consider j value as 1 for which we get the result is h of 1 here the sum is going to be examined okay so when j and k both are equal to 1 this equation will be a of 1 into h of 0 which is in accordance to the equation which is shown here okay and once the sum is evaluated we check another condition that is whether the j value is less than or equal to order so the order in the program is 2 so for j value which is 0 1 and 2 the equation for computation of impulse response is different and for those values of j which exceeds the order the equation is different so you see in the first three cases the condition is j value is less than order it involves the coefficient which is called as b here we have b naught here we have b1 here we have b2 but in the later two equation when the j exceeds the order we do not have the value of b here it simply has the a along with the previous values of the impulse response so that is why we have two equations here one catering to the order a value less than the order and those for the value which is greater than the order where we only have the bracket quantity which is indicated as the sum and at the end of each iteration of the j loop the impulse response is calculated and it is stored in the array called as h which can be printed out on similar lines you can see the program for a first order difference equation only a couple of changes are required here first thing the order is indicated as one second thing is the input so when we say it's a second uh, first order equation the number of terms you can have is only two so for a second order equation we have seen that we have three terms so the manner of evaluation and execution will be quite similar to that of the previous program now coming to the execution in code composer studio the method is same as has been described for the previous program and finally after you run it and you obtain the output in order to get a gra graphical display you can go for time frequency plot and select the options which are shown here so the output variable is called as h the number of outputs you have is 5 the output is of type floating point right and the data plot style will be bar so select these options and go for the plot and you'll get the sequence plotted in the graph window make sure that in the program we choose the library file rts 6713 which is used for programs which involve floating point values and floating point results thank you all